Queen. Atomic Blonde, directed by David Leach, who is a stuntman and stunt coordinator by trade, actually directed a few scenes on the John Wick movie, is currently filming and directing Deadpool 2, and this is his first movie, Atomic Blonde. So for a first time director, I'm gonna give him a lot of credit right off the bat. This movie isn't amazing, but it is extremely well shot, and the stunts are coordinated extremely well in this movie. So he definitely uses his strengths in this film. Unfortunately, one of his strengths is in storytelling. So the movie's decent. It's not great, it's not super cool. It's definitely not a John Wick movie if you really want that kind of hardcore action. This movie never really gets to that point. In fact, almost every action sequence in this film is in the trailers. Almost in its entirety. Now this movie does pull you back in. The last 15 minutes is one of the better action scenes I've ever seen. It's like Jason Bourne, but take out all the quick cuts and actually just give us some nice long takes. Some kind of reminded me of an 80s movie with some of the long takes and the action at the end of the movie. So, but the problems with this movie are it's very muddled story-wise. It's very convoluted. It's trying to be a cool spy thriller and or an action movie. But the actors in this movie are fine. McAvoy stands out like he generally does. He's a great actor. Pick one of the 20-something people in Split and he could play any one of those people as a full-time role. So I absolutely loved him in this movie. The thing about Charlize in this film is you basically could have gotten any woman actor to be this. There's nothing special about her to the role. It's not like a Gal Gadot with Wonder Woman things, where not only does she look like Wonder Woman, but she brings this, this presence of Wonder Woman, although I still don't think her acting is amazing. She definitely stands out as Wonder Woman. And Charlize, I know we all saw Mad Max Fury Road. We all saw her as Furiosa and thought, well, we got a big action star in our hands. But you really don't. She's much better served playing the ship's captain than she is playing one of the soldiers on the ship. And I think this movie is pretty poorly edited too, unfortunately. It does cut back and forth. The entire movie is told from an interrogation room and we continue to cut backwards in time to let us know where we are in the story. It's completely unnecessary. I don't know if it's part of the original graphic novel or it is or it isn't, but I can say that it definitely took me out of the movie. Every time we're building in this great scene, and we're, we're back in a room and people are sitting around smoking cigarettes, it's like, okay, here we go again. Now, if it was necessary for the plot, because this plot is convoluted as hell, to have to come back to that so that we can get a little narration on what's happening, you really don't. It basically just, the scenes in the interrogation room just set up the scene you're going to see, which you don't need to see because... That's the whole point of the scene. So this really isn't an action movie. This really isn't a thriller. It falls somewhere in between those two things. And that's what really hurts this movie. If you're gonna make a movie like this and you're gonna advertise it with just bam, 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 quick cut action in the trailer, then the whole movie better be like that, like John Wick. Unfortunately, this movie isn't. And it's trying to be a spy thriller too, but at the end of a spy thriller, I better be like, whoa, what, Th that? oh my god, I cannot believe that is what's happening or what happened in the movie. And like I said, at the end of this one, you're like, whatever. And we've also dyed our entire film stock blue. Now, I know this is probably to get across one. We're in dark, dreary Berlin. The wall still stands. You know, this whole movie takes place within like the 10, 12 days of the most heated moments before the Berlin Wall finally fell. But this whole stylizing with the blue film stock... The movie just looks sad. Everything just looks sad. This movie would have popped with a ton of color in it. And what can we say about the music in this movie other than it was really loud! Now the use of diegetic sound in this movie is actually pretty good. Music plays from radios. Music plays from the inside of the cars. It's balanced and mixed well. It makes sense. That's what would be on the radio at that year in that time. But the music has turned up way too loud. And some of the scenes it's just drowning out absolutely everything. It's just, it seems like poor sound design to me. There is a way to use music properly. I might reference a show like Letterkenny that you've probably never seen, or Guardians of the Galaxy, or Baby Driver. Just blaring an 80s pop song as loud as possible, drowning out all other sound while people punch each other in the face is not how you use this music. So if you're thinking you're going to see the female John Wick this weekend, you're not. You're going to see an action movie that doesn't have enough action and a spy thriller that doesn't have enough spies and or thrills in it. And like I said, it just falls somewhere in between, which is what you should do with the money that falls out of your pocket. So leave it in between the couch cushions. Don't go see this movie. Now I'm gonna go see the Emoji movie. It can't be much worse than this one, right? <laughs> 
Thank you everybody for watching once again. My name is Brandon James. Please follow me on Twitter. Also subscribe to my channel right here. Watch my other content. Watch the movie Blind Spot. If you made it this far into the episode, I totally appreciate it. Why don't you comment? Let me know. I watched the whole episode, Brandon, and I loved it or hated it or whatever. But I love talking about movies and I wish you'd join me. Thank you everybody. Take care.